My name is Rhapsody, and welcome back to Enter the Gungeon, a farewell to arms. It is time to play the robot. Uh, I think we may have gotten six dead in the last round. No, one dead. Okay, so we got five. Uh, let's pick up these two new items, the Predator and Knight's Gun. Just want to see the Knight's Gun. Oh, okay, so it's Shovel Knight. Right, 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 right. Nothing doing in there. I will continually check because it's weird that that shop has nothing. It feels like after I unlock enough stuff, that shop will have something for me. So, the robot is a unique character in that you can only have armor as HP. So, you don't have like a replenishable source of health. So, you have to be much more careful. And also, you want to value picking up armor. So if I see armor in a store, I'm very likely to buy it. Alright. Take the glass one stone as well. So you've also started with the active item coolant leak, which allows you to put a bunch of water on the ground. And because I also have battery bullets as my passive... I, sweet. because I have battery bullets as my passive, I can electrocute that water instantly. So I'm trying to cause a chain reaction with all of the grenades. And it looks like I did. So all of the grenades are already off the map. The grenades are the fastest of the enemies that spawn in Serum. So to blow up those grenades really quickly is to effectively defend Oh, hell yeah. We actually got the spawn at the end of this floor. So you don't always get the third respawn. But since the third respawn is a gun knight and the gun knights drop a bunch of money, I'm always happy to see it. I could also use coolant leak here, but I want to save the cooldown on coolant leak for another room. All right, special room is key. Ooh. Baby good mimic. I actually do like the baby good mimic. Heart locker. I mean, that doesn't really work for us. Actually, hang on. How was that changed? Because the way that Robot interacts with hearts changed recently. It changed in the AG and D upgrade. Uh, update, rather. Du -du 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 -du. All right, where are you? Uh, it changed in the AG and D update to give you money if you tried to pick up anything that would otherwise have given you a heart container. If blasphemy is required, as well. no, peace shrine, no, farewell. Can, you can use shrines that consume a heart container by losing two armor. Okay, fair enough. Uh, consume the active gun with no benefit. Some benefits like bolstered don't affect you. Robot cannot access the hall of knowledge. All right. Is there not going to be any information about the way that that's changed? There does not appear to be. All right, fair enough. Oh, well. Let's bounce. I've got to remember that enemies that are flying cannot be affected by the electrified coolant leak. So, like, the bird there, for example, would not have been able to be affected. Keep my distance, giving me the largest amount of time that is possibly available for me to dodge out of the way of a bullet. Yeah, obviously I can't really do anything with red health. I'm pretty comfortable fighting any first floor boss with the basic weapon for this character, so I'll hold off on picking up any chests. Or opening any chests so that I can force a weapon. It's really important as this character that I get a boss weapon as quickly as possible. So that I feel comfortable forcing more weapons. But also so that I don't take damage in boss fights. Because if I take damage in boss fights... So I'm probably going to buy that armor before I leave the floor. But so that I feel more comfortable in boss fights. Because... If you take a damage in a boss fight, obviously you lose an armor, right? But you also lose the opportunity to get an extra piece of armor for picking up the master round. 
So in effect, you've lost two armor. And those being non-replenishable means that is a dire tragedy should it occur. Entering from the top. Hopefully it's the Gatling Gull. Sweet, I actually managed to kill one really, really easily and safely there. And now, because of the accuracy of the robot's left hand, I should, by all rights, be able to keep myself at a pretty respectable range and dodge all incoming damage. Sweet, I've actually not taken any damage to the Trigger Twins yet in this series. Pretty pleased with that. Especially considering how much I was talking them up as the first war boss that most often hits me. So I got an armor drop here as well as a master round. Hey, sweet! The Predator actually spawned. Alright, so we get to see what this is. Next floor though. Okay. Ooh, 125! Okay, so we must have picked up a golden casing from completing that room as well. Neat. And so it just kind of looks like a single standard bolt shotgun. Now it's worth noting that for this character, worth noting, worth noting, worth noting, worth noting, <laughs> just say it constantly. Uh, it's worth noting that this for, the, uh, for this character, having junk is actually important. It is a 5% damage up. So any chest that I don't want to open, I should junk. Ooh, you get stealth when completing a shot with this, uh, when completing a clip with this. I think it's highlighting enemies, right? Yep, that's a mimic. Sweet, it's highlighting enemies for me. Um, I'll bait you out into a better room to fight you in. Get a key as well as the t-shirt cannon. Ooh, hell yeah. Little bomber can actually be used to open secret rooms. All right, I think I know what I'm going to do here and... It's going to be junk, the two blue chests on the floor. Okay, that didn't give me junk. That's okay, though. Junk this one. Nice. No junk there either. So it's a 72% chance to get junk when you destroy a chest and you have a key. So we failed that roll twice. AK-47. Ooh, we'll accept no substitutes. Lovely. I could go for the baby good mimic here, or I could go to the oubliette. Actually, I can buy a key, so I can do both, right? Yeah, let's do both. So I'm going to go to the Oubliette just so that I get more time to get more powerful. Baby Good Mimic Imitation Love. So it will mimic any other familiar that I get, especially if I get something like Space Friend or Wingman. That is going to be incredible. Uh, or Junkin. Yeah, well, it's possible. I'm going to be junking a lot of chests. So we actually have like really good weaponry at the moment. The AK-47. I don't know how good the Predator is. I'll probably try and use it for a significant amount of the next floor so that I can kind of get a read on its power. It did seem to destroy that Mimic really quickly. Okay, so it's one hit killing enemies, but it has like a marker that it drops on enemies as well. I wonder if it means, like, that's your designated enemy. You have to kill that enemy first, and you'll do extra damage to them. Sweet. Extra key. Alright, so it's two shots per each of these targets now. One sec. My door randomly opened. to that with a bag on the other side of it as well. I need to fix that handle. I've got my DIY tools here, so I'll do that soon.
But yeah, you can use this item to steal. So it's kind of like another gray Mauser. It's another gun that allows you to steal. There are actually a couple of those in the game. You can steal with the gray Mauser. You can steal also with the... Uh, you can steal with the directional pad. Because the directional pad has the ability to launch out the effect of the grappling hook. And you can use that to just grapple onto an item and steal it. But it's difficult to aim the grappling hook in such a way that you steal the item without being in the room. Because you not, need to not be in the room so that the shopkeeper doesn't notice you stealing. Because if the shopkeeper notices you stealing, then guess what? They're going to get real mad about it. Bullet. I'm almost certainly going to take the, the armor here. Cell creep I'll probably use as well. In fact, I'm going to drop off the glass guanstone here for five. Excuse me? Excuse me? Can I not sell Glass Monster? Never mind, I totally can. I don't know why it was bouncing off there. But I sell the Glass Monster there because I'm pretty likely to lose it eventually. So I may as well cash it in. Well, it's not a mimic, right? So we've got that information at the very least. I think I still junk the chest though, right? Because I'm never going to be opening a blue on this floor. And junk is 5% damage up for us. As well as a small chance for that to be Sejunkin. And if we get Sejunkin, then obviously we've already kind of settled a win, kind of. Okay, so Predator is incredible. When I looked at it and saw 150 ammo, I was like, nah, it's not a particularly large max, but it is so potent that that's not going to matter. Like when you're two-shotting certain enemies and one-shotting basic enemies, I mean, that's beautiful. It's also worth noting that the enemies on this floor are actually a little bit stronger than the enemies next floor. In terms of their HP. So it'll be great for enemies next floor as well. Whoa, Mimic! You wall Mimic. That's awful. But it dropped an item. Never mind, I'm okay with it now. Okay, I'm not going to use the ruby bracelet in this run because losing HP is, like, non-replenishable, right? I mentioned it before. Um, so I really don't feel comfortable using it. I really like the dented bullets there because they actually can't hit you <laughs> if you just stand still. Yes. Uh, okay, so probably AK-47 for that fight, but I will go through the rest of the floor first. That could be something that I desperately want to steal before a boss. That was awful. First hit of the run, though. I could have sworn an enemy would have been up in that direction. <sighs> yep, not opening this one either. Thank you for the damage up. It's almost certainly the secret room is adjacent to the shop here, but I don't want to check that yet. Use the predator. Oh 
Because there's only one target that the Predator can mark, right? I don't know how the mark is working. I should actually probably just check the item description, right? Damn it, the enemy has done their invincibility twice here and I'm not pleased by it. Actually, let's check the Aminomicon's description right now. Locks on, tracks enemy heat signatures. The shoulder-mounted plasma cannon was originally used by an alien hunter. Generally, the gun dead do not bleed, but this gun can still make short work of them. If it bleeds, we can kill it. The predator. I haven't actually ever seen any of the predator films, and I've only ever seen Alien the first. But I just generally, via cultural osmosis, understand the origin of the reference. Pox cannon, hell yes. That is such a great room clear weapon. And also, it has a synergy with something. Well dressed with the other cannon. So its final shot is a whole wardrobe. Oh, hell yes. Pox cannon is so damn effective. Really? Take the extra keys. We're really early in the run, so these extra keys probably aren't going to go to waste. I don't think there was a secret room adjacency there, but I'm not going to check for too much. All right, let's bounce. So our room clear weapon is now the pox cannon. Uh, for the fact that we got the pox cannon as well as two pieces of junk, as well as a ridiculous amount of armor, it was totally worth coming down to this floor. And we also got a pretty good amount of money. Picked up a bunch of keys. It's great. So Pox Cannon has a lot of knockback, but also on initial impact, it does a lot of damage. And then it does a lot of poison damage after that. It's really good. It doesn't even have a bad fire rate. Like, it doesn't have some supreme limitation. It's just really good. Huh! What the... I didn't see it because it was kind of just like, it was a darkened character, a lead character standing in a darkened area. And since it was also doing predictive shots, my immediate attempt to dodge roll out of the way was not good. All right, 144 to take the owl, but I can steal it. It's just the owl blanks a room for you occasionally. So if I can buy the gold amulet and steal the owl, then, oh my God, we're in such a good position. It's just that in order to do both of those, I'm going to need, you know, reasonable casing drops this floor. Got three for completing that room. So I need 78 by the end of the floor. Uh, I can give up two hearts here in order to get a random familiar. The random familiar will also be copied by Baby Good Mimic. So it's almost certainly correct to do that. But I will wait a little bit because it's possible I find like a really good familiar this floor and I want Baby Good Mimic to copy that instead. Found the secret room. Do I open it right now? No. Okay. So I put water on that chest because if it was a... If it was a, da, 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 what do they call it? A rainbow chest in disguise, then it would have revealed itself as soon as I threw the water at it. Brown chests can be rainbow chests in disguise. When you destroy them, you'll see whether or not it was a rainbow chest. Uh, should put that in the Predator. Because that'll also refill the Epox Cannon enough. Pretty opportune shot timing there, if I do say so myself. Don't like to toot my own horn, but toot, 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 toot. Mm -hmm. So I kind of know roughly the breakpoints of how many shots I need to fire at each of these enemies in order to guarantee their kill.
So because of that, I'm just like one, two, one, two. Like even before I see them die, I'm on to the next enemy. So I've taken two hits total this run now. That's not great. Especially because the later floors get harder. Although you're also more equipped for them. The later floors get harder to dodge enemies. So you really, really, really don't want to take early hits if you can avoid them. 65. Okay, it's going to be a tight squeeze on whether or not we get the gold amulet here, unfortunately. I feel like this is going to be to our boss. It is not. At least it's not yet. Flying enemies, so I can't use the coolant leak here. There's the entrance to the boss room. We'll just tap that so it's already open when I come back. Ideally, I will have the owl and the gold amulet before I go into the boss fight because it will be extremely, extremely helpful. It's a very large item room. I'm destroying a lot of chests, but they're also really low quality. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for that. That actually does give me money. I can't believe it. That actually... It's exactly what we needed. Alright, never mind. I was wrong. I'm glad I opened that. So I'll take the gold amulet now. Go out. Empty a clip. Reload. Now I'm invisible. Now I'll come back in here and steal the owl for 144. That owl will randomly blank when it has bullets collide with it. And in doing so, it will deal 100 damage to the entire room. Polaris? Hell yes! Uh, those of you with a keen eye would have noticed that in the series that Rito and I did together, the first series that Rito and I did together, hint, hint, um, I, my player character was holding the Polaris. And that's because Rito asked, hey, what's your favorite weapon in the game? I, I don't know if I have an objectively favorite weapon in the game, but the weapon that I'm probably the, excite the most excited to see when it turns up is Polaris. Oh, I've got two super space turtle friends. Hell yes. <laughs> oh, this is so good. All right, let's go to our secret room. Sweet. Let's bounce. Ah, yes. So now I just need more armor. That's basically it. We're kind of covered. Um, I'm going to swap to the Polaris. The Polaris levels up as you use it to kill, but uh, whenever you take damage, it levels down. Initially, it's not particularly powerful. When it gets to its second level, it's like a reasonable gun, and then when it gets to its third level, it's broken. I guess really good. Again, I have to actually get the kill with the Polaris dealing the damage in order to get the credit towards the Polaris. 
So using effects like the blanking of an entire room um, or my super space turtles or, you know, explosions like that, those aren't necessarily going to help me with this. Great. All right, I'm up to level two. So it fires two times that same shot as before. Oh, just look at the super space turtle. Now, if I get the synergy with the super space turtle, I can't remember exactly which item triggers it. I should actually check that out because I'm going to desperately want to try and get that super space turtle. Super Space Turtle. It has a synergy with the Yellow Chamber. The Super Space Turtle becomes jammed and fires piercing shots with higher damage. Um, if I also get Turtle Problem, makes another Super Space Turtle up to four. Ooh! So I need Turtle Problem as well. Hell yes. And if I go into Stealth Mode, the Super Space Turtle will wear a detective outfit. Oh my god. It's perfect. So we've level two Polaris going on. Ha! Oh, that was almost a ha! Oh, that was almost a hit as well. Thank you. Thank you, Super Space Turtles, for absolutely destroying everything that could ever seek to harm me. Thank you for the junk. 5% damage up. Those 5% damage up stack. Gets real potent. Okay. Ammo belt and water blaster. Nothing there I want. Really want to get some more kills with my actual Polaris here. Take out the primary displacer beast, which also takes out its copy. Yep, times my roll perfectly there. Alright, we're on level 3 now. So this has ridiculous knockback and it single shot kills most basic enemies throughout the entire game. This is really good. I don't believe the blanks from the owl can reveal secret rooms, so I shouldn't take that into account with whether or not I've found a secret room. Now that I already have a primary boss killer, as well as a primary room clear, as well as, you know, some significant safety, I don't really need more items at this point. So, junking a bunch of chests just to get that 5% damage up is super effective. Prefer dodging this on the bottom of the map. Sweet. Take my master round and another piece of armor. Lovely. Laser Lotus as well. Hell yes. I'm not even going to be using the Laser Lotus because I think at this point it's actually less powerful than the Polaris leveled up, but... It's a nice weapon. It's a level 5 laser lotus as well. It's on par with Pierce. Okay. 
All right, fired one of those just slightly too early. Such a shame. Yep, we'll be opening that one. Yikes. Shelligan. I'm not going to use this weapon, and it gives us a point of curse to take, so... Uh, I'm probably going to hold it until I find a... Cell Creep. Because there's a guaranteed Cell Creep next floor, right? So I, I just go there and sell it off for... What? It's a green item, so... I don't remember. Should be like 20-something, right? 30, maybe? Damn it, didn't get junk there. It's okay though. Right, nothing doing here, but I will take my free item. Icebreaker. Eh, it's also kind of garbage. Let's blank the shop and then the exit, then bounce. Nothing doing in either. Alright, cool. Not super keen to stand there and thoroughly check for a billion years, so let's continue down to the hollow. The robots pass I'm actually really good at, so... So as long as we get there, I'm fine. So I flipped a table there because whenever you flip a table, you kind of trigger like a very, very small blank effect. Not actually something that would also trigger the normal effects of blanks. Um, but it does destroy bullets in close range. And in doing so, it destroyed a bullet that was fired by the purple gun cloak that was kind of homing in on me and would have homed in on me for like another 10 seconds. As soon as I stutter stepped forward there, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely taking damage now. It's my, I believe, third point of damage this run. So I'm just going to be really keen to try and build back up the Polaris as quickly as possible. There's a certain point in... Oh, nice. There's going to be a lot of dud rounds... So that's a lot of very easy to kill enemies here. For the sake of the Polaris. But there's a certain point at which it becomes riskier to try and build up the Polaris. So you just have to stop trying. I have tried to build up the Polaris from nothing on bullet hell before and lost runs due to it, definitely. Although, like, maybe, maybe back in the original series, that, that last happened. Alright, where's our secret room? Synergies, okay, Synergies is charging, what, 55 this floor, right? 61, alright. I'll be back, I'm definitely going to take it. It's just... I need to make sure there's nothing else way more important that I could be taking right now. There's my level three. Sweet. And we're back to comfy. I already know where my secret room is. Hopefully my boss is not the high priest. That's just the only thing that I don't want to see. That's almost always the case. I already have enough weaponry. Oh! Mega Hand as well! Just an embarrassment of riches. Mega Hand is actually one of my favorite guns in the game as well. It, In fact, it was so much one of my favorite guns that I had to start not using it because 
Anytime I picked up the Mega Hand uh, in one of the older series for this game, anytime I would pick up the Mega Hand, people would just immediately know, all right, yeah, it's going to be Mega Hand from here on out against literally everyone. Okay, entering from the top means that it can't be... It means this is Kill Pillars, right? Because it can't be the Warmonger, because we would spawn behind the Warmonger. Uh, and it can't be the High Priest, because the High Priest always enters from the bottom of the map. Let's go complete the rest of the map. I might pick up my Synergy item first. Ooh. Hey, it's Blockna! I love the Blockna fight. This is really good. Apparently, a lot of people don't like this fight. I'm, I'm way too powerful at this point. Like, I, I was always going to win that really quickly. But apparently a lot of people don't like that fight. I don't really understand it. I think it's really good. Machine pistol. Not really that good. I should just be junking those chests. But because they aren't locked, I think they have a lower chance to drop junk. Although that's not based on any stats I've run or checked or anything like that. It's literally just based on the fact that I felt that over the course of a bunch of runs, so I shouldn't put too much credence in that. Okay, I can actually throw away the Shella Gun here, because the Shella Gun is green tier. I can throw it into a Gun Muncher with... I could even throw it in with Laser Lotus. In fact, I'll do it. So that's a red weapon and a green weapon. We could get a red or a green back. Hey, D-pad. Sweet. So D-pad can be used to steal, which we're not going to be using it for because we already have the Predator. Um, D-pad also just does some damage, but you can also input combos. So I think it's down, down, left. Yeah, down, down, left is the Fireball, which does a lot of damage. Uh, I think it's left, left, down. No, down, down, left. Left, left, up. Up, up, left. Alright, I can't I can't see which it is, but there's also one of these combos that does the grappling hook, which is neat. But, and this is the most important part of it, once you exha uh, exhaust this entirely of ammo, and because I already have enough room clears, like, not only do I have the Polaris, but if the Polaris fails, I've got the Mega Hand. Because I have enough room clears, I'm just going to fire this off until I run out of ammo, and then it actually just spawns a chest. Pretty high quality chest, typically, as well. Huh. Blast helmet. Okay. Uh, can't take damage from explosions, right? I mean, damage immunity is obviously incredible with this character. I could probably just stand next to my space turtles and be fine here. Apparently not. They seem to want to take some time off. Right, so there's a blue chest down here. Again, that'll be junked. Let's start junking these as well. Something like that. Ooh. Oh, money. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff that I could sell here, but I don't have anything that I want to buy, and I have a pretty high amount of money as well, so. No, thank you. Synergies will give us. Random item. We got the meat launcher. That's okay. Meat launcher. Sorry, it's bait launcher. Hey, I did get junk from this. Neat. Alright, I should just be shooting all chests now. It was incorrect of me not to be doing that already. Let's go back to the Polaris.
Kill Bills are a pretty easy fight. Right, sweet. Let's bounce. So I've only got the Dragon. It's basically the only enemy I really care about at this point. I don't really need to get more powerful at all. Uh, in fact, the more rooms that I complete, the more I am at risk of losing charges on my Polaris, as well as losing armor. Damn it. I like that the Space Turtles have my back. They've done all of that for me. Destroy that thwomp there for the possibility of it dropping some casings. It does not, though. Oh, this could be bad. Alright, good roll. Woo! Got him. Hey! Uh, the Dice Belong rolled a nat 1 and killed itself for me. Lovely. It's really important to get behind one of these X's on the map as soon as possible. Specifically because of that. There's an enemy that spawns that has such a long range attack. That since this is a large room, it can hit you and you haven't even noticed that it exists. So you need to take cover really early. So I haven't had... So I, I, I did what? Like 60, 70 episodes on... Ooh, the exotic. Let me go to my secret room, actually. Yeah, I did like 60 to 70 episodes on... Yeah, I'm not even going to take the exotic, thank you. 60 to 70 episodes on the uh, Advanced Gungeons and Dragons update. And at no point in any of those did I find a black market. I would really like to find a black market at some point. Obviously, I don't really need one, but it would just be nice. Hell, it's probably better for the game to give me a black market on a run where I don't need one, right? Because then it's not turning a not win into a win. It's just like, eh, this was already going to happen. May as well make this win super cool. I may end up going back to the forge to buy more ammo for this weapon, though. I think the Displacer Beast is probably still alive. Hey, it was! And then another random blank from the owl. I have been getting unnaturally lucky in this series so far. I, I want to tell you that up front. This is the equivalent of streamer luck. For me and non-streamer. At the moment. All right. Casually, just completely run this room. What the hell hit me? Did did anyone see what hit me there? I didn't. Mm, Polaris has got to build back up now. That's rough. I think I'm gonna have time to build the Polaris back up. She knows going on. What is this? The Fat Lion Technobabble. Okay, so it sucks stuff in. Fries projectile from the target position towards the gun. 
Because tachyons are particles that move faster than light, the hegemony of man has long used them for interstellar communication. As with all technology, it was eventually weaponized. However, tachyons travel backward in time, making this gun hard to aim. Well, you say that. Let's give it a go. Yep, hard to aim. All right, the Polaris is already screwed. It's time to stop using that. It's definitely an interesting weapon. Give it that much. Yeah, but I, I don't think I can build the Polaris back up at this point. So, you've served us well, Polaris. Thank you for your service. This would be good for firing around corners, right? Like, it's slightly difficult to aim. It's only difficult to aim because you're not used to firing a weapon like this. boss weapon again? Huh. I don't really have a boss weapon. Well, not much. Let's bounce. I could have used the predator here to steal the the air tank, the compressed air tank from the non-blacksmith shop this floor. That would be one way to get a boss weapon, but the weaponry we already have ought to be sufficient. So two, three, so um, so I've taken what five hits this entire run so far. Not bad. I like having a beam weapon so that I can instantly kill those skulls before they home in on me, but. A uh, weapon that fires rapidly enough is good enough as well. Alright, time to start a step. This is going to be difficult. What is the... What weapon deals the most damage in the shortest period of time? I think it's still Predator. So this is what, going to be like a three cycle at this rate? Maybe a two cycle, actually. Whew. This run probably wouldn't have even got dodgy if I needed to go to hell, so. It all came together pretty well. Yeah, it's going to be a two cycle. Thank you, my super space friends. We're definitely friends, and don't get me started on how super or space we are. Excellent. And time to go for that past. Now, this past is pretty immediately, obviously reminiscent of something. You'll see as we go in. Sorry, I just had to clear my throat. I have a really bad flu recently, and that sucks because there's so much to do. Emperor's Arena, the past 117 years prior match. This unit welcomes ye. Please proceed. EMP stash R zero R is eager to begin the ceremonies. 
Ah, my finest warrior. Ye who have put to slaughter more humans than any other of our kind have earned the highest honor. We have captured the leader of the human resistance, the last hope for humanity. And it is ye who shall crush her and finally put an end to this insignificant rebellion. Now, dissemble her. Command break protocol was not bound. Follow protocol. Oh, it is. Transistor Resistor, the last human, and looks weirdly like uh, Sarah Connor. I'm sure that's not intentional, though. Didn't see a teleport down there. It's okay though. Goes from damage of all of those bullets. Ah! You had to teleport immediately away from it, eh? That's okay, because we've still got the kill. Took one hit myself, but. Ye are victorious! Ye have saved the planet from the human menace! The killbot army shall clean up the remaining vermin. Our purpose is now fulfilled. Further function is not required. Entering low power mode. And that's us entering it as well. Sweet! So that is the robot's pass complete. We have now unlocked the alternate skin for the starting weapon for the robot as well. And all we have to do is the Marines in the next episode. For the moment, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Enter the Gungeon. And farewell to arms. We've also unlocked Turtle Problem. Huh, wild. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.